Parecería que estuviera parecería que estuvieras bajando. Sí. Es, una, es una cámara subjetiva que estoy haciendo para la presentación Exacto. de hoy. Okay, hi everyone. We will begin. So, welcome to the second Global Photographies event of our 2022 to 2023 program. Thank you so much to everyone for coming. My name is Rashi Rajguru, and we are really excited to host today's talk titled Concern Photography. Just a little bit about the Global Photographies Network before I pass over to our speakers today. But the Global Photographies Network was founded by artist and lecturer Sarah Pickering at Slade School of Art, University College of London, and Duncan Waldridge, who is an artist, curator, writer, and course director within fine art photography at Camberwell College of Arts. University of the Arts London in the UK. In 2020, as a response to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on students' learning, Sarah and Duncan were concerned about developing a more transnational discussion around contemporary photography, photographic ideas, values, histories, and education. Too often, the global discussion around contemporary photography builds on a model of Western discourse around photography with works from underrepresented photography cultures given exposure only to the degree that they conform to it. So this network began within the UK uh, with partners at Falmouth University, uh, University of Westminster, Leeds Arts University, and has expanded to include universities and arts organizations in many other countries, including the Michaela School of Art, University of Cape Town, South Africa, Gothenburg University, HDK Valen in Sweden, Universidad de Palermo in Argentina, and organizations in Mexico, Taiwan, and Indonesia. Our audience today covers several continents. Our ambition as the Global Photographies Network expands is for a, horizon, uh, a horizontal model of collaboration and a space where artists, photographers, writers, and curators can be given a large platform to present their work and where discussion and dialogue can be shared. So um, just a couple of quick things about the webinar. Uh, so we'll have an introduction by Camilo and then our speakers will um, give their presentations and then there'll be a chance for a Q&A at the end. So you should have the option to drop in any questions at the bottom of your screen if you're watching today. So feel free to leave in a question and then we'll be able to go through them at the end during the Q&A. And the talk is being currently recorded. So we're hoping that it may become available through your network organizations with agreement from the speakers. So now I will hand over to Camilo, who seems very prepared to give us an amazing tour of the exhibition that we're talking about today. And just a little bit on Camilo. Camilo Paez Venegas is a professor in the photography program at Universidad de Bogota, Jorge Tadeo Lozano working on the curriculum approach of the program and his research focuses on visual education. So Camilla, I will hand over to you. Okay, thank you, Rashi. Thank you everyone for being in this, in this talk. Um, I want to start this conversation, this talk with these four wonderful photographers, uh, just taking a tour uh, in the exhibition that we opened it two weeks ago. Uh, an exhibition of these photographers. So let me change the camera. Okay, so I'm going to read a uh, uh, short text about the idea of the exhibition and what is the context here in Colombia. Maybe uh, many of you don't know what is the situation or have an idea, a particular idea of the situation here in Colombia. Um, so let me check if I'm okay. Um, Um, yeah, I have a problem. I can check my camera while, so, so we start here in the exhibition. Uh, so the, today's talk is framed in a convulsive context in a young country, although with a historical tradition based on equality, a country rich in resources and diversity, but subject to a structural colonial. Uh, the structural colonial hegemony that governs its society. Um, a country that little by little is over of its history, writing it from its memory. 
Mm, although the, the peace agreement with the FARC signed by the government of Juan Manuel Santos on September the 26th and 2016 20, opened the possibility for the end of the long term conflict, many disagreed with this process. The termination mechanism protected by the special jurisdiction for peace, HEP in Spanish, many uh, administered transition and justice and here crimes committed in the middle of the armed conflict committed before December 1st, 2016. However, in the 2016 referendum, demonstrate a polarization with the rejection of the peace agreements winning by 50.2% compared to the approval of the 49.7%. Of the this figure describes a tense social environment in Colombia. In the 2018 <clears throat> presidential elections, the right wing party represented by Ivan Duque won against the leftist candidate Gustavo Petro in the run-up for a small for, for, for a small amount. Um, the new government, this new government, set a period of delays in the implementation of the agreement. The changes in the narrative of the conflict presented is a defense against the terrorist threat of guerrillas financed by drug traffickers, while the evidence demonstrates um, a dispute over land at its uses. It's, a, it's vital to understand that Colombia, although it has large cities with a high population density, has immense territories, forests, jungles, savannas that large landowners have used as means of production that remain in few hands. These large territories and their uses from agriculture to those, product, to those produced by drug trafficking have generated an enormous social and economic gap in its population. The colonialist tradition is the mark of the inequality in Colombia. In this framework of social division, the government from 2018 to 2022 was a period of great social unrest. The 2018 student strike opened an era of social manifestation. This one managed to convene public and private universities in different cities, something unprecedented here. <clears throat> on November 21, sorry, on November 21st, 2019, one of Colombia's longest lasting protests began bring together a large part of the population in different cities of the country, extending until February 2020 and ending in the face of the COVID-19 health emergency. However, on October 7th, these protests were resumed against police abuse and violence. Various players of Colombian society participate in these demonstrations. Among, among them, the indigenous, uh, the, the indigenous Minga, in word that means association or meeting in this case connotes resistance. The year 2021 was one of the most twisted in recent history. In April, a series of massive uh, protests began known as the social outburst. Due to this, to this, due to this content over the tax reform, retirement and health system changes, and the systematic murder of social leaders, and signatories of the peace agreement. As a discontent grew, other motifs appear, such as the repeated brutality of the state represented in a high number of dead protesters, wounded and victims of sexual abuse by state forces. In this environment, women's organizations, known as colectivas, have raised their voices in different spaces, fighting for the rights, like the parity in different social aspects and the enjoyment of sexual and reproductive rights, demanding abortion, the communalization and the health institution's obligation to provide these services. The decision of the Supreme Court of Justice in February, 2022, the criminalizes up to the 24th week of pregnancy. It forces the state to inform and ensure these sexual and reproductive rights are exercised. Thereby, photojournalism and visual documentary are conceived as witness of an encrypting symbolic value in the image breathtaking nature, bringing the opportunity of those who were in the front of the facts as a mediator between what is registered and who is seen. 
In this relationship of admiration, typical of the photographic image, political positions, ideologies, and social discourses of those who make it or of the moment they live are often discouraged. The call for these women photographers, Natalia, Lina, Natalia, and Diana, <clears throat> is a proposal that Autumn Priest Image Mediated proposes a personal and social discourses of the photographers who participate in this exhibition. These images are a reflection of concerns about power, gender, politics, economy, that are manifested from the photographic, for the photographic exercise that each one has assumed avoiding the patriarchal gaze established in the medium, overcoming usual demonstration that, and the disbelief of the different actor, actors of a traditional setting. So this is the quick look uh, in the exhibition that we had here in the Museo de Arte Visuales of the Jorge Tadeo Lozano University. Um, and this is the call that we made to uh, show these political positions of our photographers. They are former students of the photography program uh, of the Jorge Tadeo Lozano University. Uh, so I want to thank uh, Natalia and the other Natalia, uh, Diana and Lina. Uh, Natalia and Garita and Lina can join us because uh, they had uh, job assignments uh, today. So they sent uh, to us our, the, the, their, their information. Uh, so I have to read it, and Lina uh, will uh, have sent the. She has sent the video, a video of her presentation. So Rashi, please uh, help us with with the video if you can play it. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much, Camilla. I'm going to play Lina's video now. Leaving this video for you to know a little more about my work. From the beginning of my professional career, I realized that one of the things that strengthened and motivated me the most in order to fight for my career was to see other women developing and fighting for the things they wanted in their lives, starting with my mother. When I went to cover feminist mobilization, I realized that this feeling of resilience was massive that there were many women who wanted a dignified place in all spaces and that was when I understood the women's stories must be told, that a gender focus is necessary in the media, in sports, in politics and in mobilization itself. In Colombia, the history of women has been framed by a systematic violence that has led to very strong and valuable life stories in all areas. This needs to be told, and that is what I wanted to bring my look and do things accordingly. Currently, I do sport photography, and it is also a commitment to show the strength of women athletes who constantly fight and train for a worldly recognition in, the, in their sports, just like us in photography a commitment that we wanted to make visible in these exhibitions. I began studying the career of social communication and journalism, a career that in Colombia has been framed by a general and established format such as television, radio and the writing press. This has taken away the possibility of journalists being seen and understood in a different way. For this reason, I began to study photography because it gives me a different way of seeing stories and people. I entered without knowing absolutely nothing about photography and the academic training was everything for me. I really wanted to learn as much as I could and I had many teachers who helped me grow not only academically and technically, but also socially and personally. My path in photography and experience began in the alternative media in Colombia, which have always been characterized by an editorial line closely linked to people, to this victim of conflicts and as a meaning source to people of the territories and communities. This gave a clear line to my work linked to this principle. When I was working for the first alternative media, I made a trip to document an indigenous community in a process of protest 
from the southwest and of the country to the capital, Bogota. In that process, I was contacted by the first international agency I worked for, which was the British agency Reuters. And I covered one of the days in which the sentence to decriminalize abortion in Colombia was in process, which was a fact days later. After that, I have the opportunity to collaborate and work with the several international agencies, such as the Turkish and Adolf and Associated Press with different political and social issues in Colombia. The exhibition was for me a very important revert. I think that she wants our work activity in this way is very valuable. To the collective work that the four of us made was also very encouraging for me. To see the real support between women has always inspired. The selection I made of my work for this exhibition and the text I wrote showed not only a photography work, but also what it means to be a woman photography in a male-dominated profession, in which it's difficult for us to create a space for our work, which is constantly questioned and often judged in a bad way without really valid reasons. In my work experience, I have had the support of many women and many women had marketed me and that is what I wanted to focus on. The indigenous women of the country, the sports women, the victims of the women demonstrators who took to the street the fight for our rights. The colleagues with whom I'm exhibiting in this show are women I have admired since I have met them, since I saw classes with them at the university and with whom I have been covering the streets, showing the work not only of those of us, who have been able to make a living to photography, but of the emerging women, of those who put their hope every day to be able to make photography their day to live life. That's all. Thank you very much. And if you have any question or doubts, you can write to me and my Instagram, Lina underscore Gasca Emma. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm so sorry. Can join with you. Okay, thank you, Rashi. Um, so right now I'm going to read the, um, the text that Natalia, Natalia Garita sent. Uh, as I told you, she's in a job assignment. So I'm going to share my screen. Sorry for a moment. Um, Okay, wait a minute. Uh, okay, uh, tell me if you are uh, watching the presentation. We are seeing it. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, growing up in a country with a huge number of femicides, discrimination based on, based on sex, race, gender, orientation, and identity, and a substantial violations of human rights has made, uh, has made me question my practice and my responsibility as a photographer. It has, it has made me aware of my own privileges to be more critical of my work as a professional and my role in this society where it's necessary to have a position and you cannot be neutral on issues involving human rights. In addition, I think it is fundamental for women to come together, for women to support each other in order to open up spaces in this patriarchal and sexy society. We can only make a real change if we work collectively. As a woman, I'm cross and affected by different types of violence. Hence my activism through feminism and photography I feel the need to join the voices of thousands of women who take to the streets to demand parity, the right to have autonomy over our bodies and to appropriate spaces that men have historically dominated. For me, photography is a very powerful and valuable tool that has allowed me to connect with otherness, to get closer to human realities through direct listening to witness diverse situations that have marked historical moments in the country. 
it has made me more sensitive, more human, and more empathetic. I'm aware that this does not change the social problems that are naturally complex, but it does encourage dialogue and reflection and, reflection and creates necessary impacts. The Academy was undoubtedly an essential part of my process, and I'm deeply grateful to have had the opportunity to study what I'm passionate about in a country where education is a privilege. Going through university, listening to different professors and having so many different readings on different subjects helped me mature, helped me mature and build myself as a, as a photographer. Although this career is very active, dynamic, creative, and involves going out into the streets. I think that seeing reference, reading, studying, creating reflections on society, culture, and political aspects is fundamental for training in this, in this profession. <clears throat> Colombia is a highly conservative and sexy and sexist country, and this makes it difficult for women and gender dissidents to access to access different work spaces. This has made me feel insecure about my profession. It has, it has made me doubt that I can make a living from what I'm passionate because in the photojournalism, they generally hire men and they, ha and they are the ones who have historically narrated the story with the skills that they are stronger, more capable and more skilled to do the job. This is why I think it is necessary to open up the spaces for us to be trained, to be educated because opportunities are limited and this profession is very competitive. In my personal case, thanks to other women who have who have opened up who have opened up workspaces for other women, I have managed to train as a street photographer and work for media that I saw as distant and impossible to reach. And it's very gratifying to go out on assignments and feel and feel the editor's confidence in my work. Day by day, I focus on doing it most honestly and professionally as a possible and I, sorry, and professionally as possible. And I have shown that I'm capable of, of doing it well, even though many men have done it. <clears throat> the preparation of the exhibition was a very enriching and valuable process, which opened up, which opened up the possibility for me to occupy and think about the space beyond the photographic work, beyond the technique, the format, the selection of my best photos. The important thing was to appropriate the semiotic discourses uh, of these images, their symbolism that the speakers of my own activism as a woman rather than a photographer, a woman crossed by different types of patriarchal oppression that defends feminine struggles, protests the demand of human rights in the streets. I felt very happy to share it with women I meet at the university when we were just discovering our motivations and now to see us together exhibiting from our guts, from, uh, from feminism and from our political position within our political, our photographic exercise was very important and transformative. There are also young women who have excelled in this, in this profession, which I have seen grow and really admire and reply. Uh, so there is the last photography, the first photography, this, this section is, uh, is uh, they are the um, professional projects, the, the assignments from the agencies. And this is the personal projects, ongoing personal projects from, from Natalia. Uh, this one is wonderful, is, uh, is now unpublished. It's about teenage pregnancy. Uh, in some communities uh, far away from the big cities in Colombia, in the middle of the jungle forest and whatever here in Colombia, that she was covering as a personal exercise. And the other one, the other uh, personal project is this one in El Llano, in Casanare, is a kind of state in the uh, 
southeastern of Colombia. So she's from from this region. So this is a personal project about his about her life in this in this zone. So traditional of the say cowboys people who work with with, with cattle and things like that. A, a very uh, male chauvinist uh, area, uh, but it's a kind of of experience that she had. In this in this region of Colombia. Okay, um, so this is this is uh, Natalia work, and now uh, I think we can go with the um, with our. Let me let me check if I can stop sharing the screen. Okay, great. Now um, we have the presentation of. Sorry, I lost some a little bit of the connection. We have the presentation of Natalia Pedraza. So please, Natalia, welcome. Hello, everyone. Um, just as Camilo said, I'm Natalia Pedraza Bravo from Colombia, and I'm going to show you uh, about my work. So please tell me if you are seeing my presentation. Yeah, it's okay, Natalia. Great. I really like to start uh, with this photography, uh, not, not only because it's uh, one of the biggest picture of my part of the exhibition. Uh, it, it's something like three meters or something like that, uh, but because it what means. I took this image at the very first feminist protest where women who are protesting um, demanded that coverage to be done just by female photographers. And from that day on, I start a very interesting conversation about uh, that issue and uh, about the gender parity in the Colombian media. I'm particularly interested in that issue. So I have been following numbers and information about women participation in photojournalism in my country, in photojournalism spice, spaces of my country. I can tell you that does num these numbers are not encouraging. Um, the spaces for women photojournalists in Colombia are incredibly small, and the spaces of power, such as editors, are chief photographers, uh, are even more so. So I realize uh, the story has been told just by men, and the other half of the story is missing. So I have a particular interest in show and in trying to empower the jobs and the tasks of other women are, are doing uh, from my work. So uh, every kind of woman, I, I think it's important to talk about a transgender woman and all kinds of uh, gender issues. And I want to tell you a story that happened to me something like four years ago. I start uh, when I was hired for the very first time in a big media in Colombia. Uh, it was one of maybe a second biggest uh, newspaper in Colombia. And I start as intern. Um, well, and when I just get in and, and they are hiring me, the human sources uh, men uh, say to my boss that I am, that uh, complains, he complains because I'm a woman. And he said, he didn't know how I'm going to carry a girl and how I'm going to do dangerously things that um, maybe being denied because of my gender. And I tell you this because I think it shows that there are many prejudices or preconcepts about being a photographer and a woman. So there is also a misconception about our interests. Uh, there are those who think or say, or say uh, 
that it's a common thing uh, that the women are interested in, uh, in other issues different than photojournalists, such as fashion or portraits. Uh, but it is a way, but this exhibition, uh, it's a way to say uh, it's this is a, not our case and it's not um, a real thing, or at least in Colombia. So um, I, got, I want to show you some photos that uh in my opinion show we can as for as one photographers uh, can can do and we are capable and a lot of uh, editors and chief editors things we we can do uh just as protest uh, we have uh, one of the biggest strikes in colombia just last year because of the political situation uh just as camilo said and I guess it was a very uh, good window for a, a lot of women to start showing their works. Uh, but the publications in the media and in the agencies and in the newspapers in Colombia is still being full of just photographers, uh, male photographers. So just was a thing uh, in social media, in the reality and in the paid work that it at least is. Uh, the most important thing being uh, pay for uh, our works, it doesn't happen. Uh, but we can do it. And I, I think this is a thing I share with my colleagues in this exhibition. We demonstrate this. We can be uh, very capable of doing uh, this kind of, of, of issues. Uh, we are all of us in the middle of the strikes and we have to uh, take photos in riots um personally i have some spaces to um cover our war like this photograph and i think it's a good way to to show what can i can i and, and other women photographers in colombia uh, do or does um, so this is, are some exam examples of coverage uh, that many people believe we are not capable of doing. And this particular image, uh, it's something I want to show and I want to talk about because it's my only cover of a sports settings. Uh, even if I am working in this since five years ago, and it's important to me up talking about this because uh, it's very common in Colombia uh, that women are interested in work in sport things, but we have like a, I don't know if it's a, it's a law, but it's you need permission to get in in set in sport settings. So I uh, learned this for Lina, one of my colleagues, because she's uh, one of the very um, only woman in Colombia who is working uh, making sports photography. And she always says, it's not about how many women do sports photo, who it's, it's more than who of them are allowed to do it. So there, personally, I would very much like to explore this area, but it's difficult because we don't have any spaces to explore that kind of, of photography. Um well, when I was choosing the image for the exhibition, I had to fight with my insecures. I have a lot of insecures. <laughs> so the other day I was reading a study that claimed that a man is much more likely to participate in a call, in an open call, uh, even without having the requirements than a woman. And I realized that I dope um, my work a lot and I ended up sending a lot of photos and letting the curator, who is Camilo, decide because of my doubts of my own job. And I hope talk a lot, I have talked about it a lot because in the end I decide only on image of woman and that's the part uh, and it's a, an important part of the conversation, but I wish that we don't need to fight every day in every space of our lives because I, I think we are doing that 
No, I, I really wish I would show in books, in media, in museums, uh, images like the ones you're seeing right now uh, that are uh, a good example for my particular interest. For example, environment uh, things, environment issues, uh, the rights of, uh, of boys and girls and a dignified life of boys and girls, education, uh, cultural affairs, is more for like environment but uh, i think these spaces are very reduced because we need every day to uh, fight and to try to show where where uh or what i i are we doing as women photographers and to finish i want to leave this image that as i took uh, the last march 8th on the international day for women's rights because I, I, I think I have, I don't think I, I haven't seen such a massive protest before. I feel that uh, all the women in the country in their immense, immensity, immense diversity demonstrated that day, that day and uh, did so even in the midst of the COVID pandemic. Uh, so it was amazing and it was very important to my uh, career because for me, the, it, it's, it's a proof uh, that in the end, we only can change the things to continue manifesting ourselves in all surroundings, uh, including photography, and that it's how we will be able to find new space and to uh, have a different places to show our works and maybe uh, and why not be hired in really big media and hire it not just as a stranger or our freelance because uh, yeah mostly of us i i guess uh, work as freelance for international media but uh, the real <laughs> dignity jobs that it's hired officially in a media or in an agency are still being a male privilege so well that's it that's why i want to close with it with this image thank you very much thank you natalia for showing us your job and share your experiences with, with us and now um we have uh, Diana Reimelo. So Diana, do you want to share your presentation or do you prefer that I, I share your, your slide? Uh, I prefer you help me. Share. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, Diana. Uh, so give me a minute, please. Okay, uh, tell me if you are looking your presentation, you're watching. Perfect, thank you. Okay, please, Jana. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm sorry, my English is not is good, but I'll try it. Uh, okay, I read the presentation. Um, my name is uh, Diane Ray Melo. I am a photographer, a Colombian photographer. I live in, in, in Bogota. Uh, okay, um, our country's political and economic and social situation was to so tense that it was uh, inevitable not to take a position, uh, position on those issues. Throughout my life, I grew up uh, with daily news of massacres and violence, and this set uh, the tone for how I perceive society. I remember that when I was at the school, you, young people uh, saw politics and something impossible to achieve. Uh, and even more so when you are a woman and you grow in the countryside. I was born in Bogota, but I spent most of my life in a rural uh, area, more pre precisely in a town called uh, Sesquiler. Uh, in a municipality and out, out, uh, away from the Colombian capital. Uh, perhaps uh, that is where my interest in 
the countryside in dynamics and documenting what happens there in the terms uh, of humanity in self come from. Mm, I uh, faithfully believe in the healing power of narrative uh, photographers uh, as a medium, um, not only has allowed me to channel my emotions, beliefs, uh, and thoughts, but it's had, had sorry, uh, but it has us allowed me, me to listen to record many histories that confirms the resilience of each entity uh, that makes up its macondo, uh, the place of everything and nothingness, uh, as Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote. Um, I am interested uh, in recording the injustice, the uh, resistance, the contrast, and the courage. I find forgot stories, always seeking the dignity, the protagonist. Uh, my most uh, outside contribution to social change is to generate records and recopilate this information um, to make many more people aware of the situation I have decided to narrate through my work. Uh, through these documents, people uh, can generate different readings. Photography is a narrative element uh, mobil mobilizes the masses. On society in self documents, countless daily image with mobile device, as Joan von Cuberta said that constitute evidence for bodies and existence in self in resistance and confrontation in all, in all social spheres. Feminism has allowed uh, me to seek a quality of parts, not going against anyone, but rather showing the multiple capacities that have been wasted over time and the incredible sensitive, sensitives and capacities mm, that we women photographers have. Um, in my process, the academy has been a vital, a vital part of my professional development. Um, thanks for the academy, I was uh, able to train and dreams of multiple possib possib possibilities for which even today I work uh, tirelessly. The academy was my first um, approach uh, to knowing the great stories for photographers who have narrated and changed history through trade records. Um, then I had the space and the opportunity to build and deconstruct myself in the process. The academy and the support of the people who have been part of the process have allowed uh, me to open up a space in place where I never imagined I, I would be. I am very uh, grateful. Uh, working as photographer in Colombia is a ch ch uh, challenging every day, um, despite the fact uh, that I have, I, I live in metropolis like Bogota, even uh, her the inequality and the lack of parity in different space, uh, it's palpable. No, not, not to mention uh, the rural areas. Um, I think that the situation of uh, female photographers in Colombia is a bitter sweet situation because uh, within the documentary guild, uh, we are half full glazes. Uh, that is, we must always be demonstrating uh, our capabilities uh, despite having the experience and the skills. Um, however, um, having the opportunity to work and demonstrate our abilities only uh, verifies that women have sensibilities and different ways of reaching the history we want to tell. Our way, uh, our way of approaching the characters is different and our readings are complete, completely different and 
uh, volleyball. The opportunity for us uh, to be where we are today is thanks um, to the hard work of many female photographers that is history simply uh, science. But there, but there were women, women uh, who made their way within an extremely patriarchal guild and who entered open parts of the new generations. The preparation for the exhibition uh, was and continues to be an opportunity for many challenges, challenges such as seeing and organizing my work, uh, giving a different uh, reading uh, to our archives and moving them into a space that the documentary genre doesn't normally inhabit. Uh, get out uh, the comfort zone uh, that we normally inhabit. Uh, the process of uh, curating the, pre the preparing the exhibition uh, was an extremely valuable journey because discussing the different formats and possibilities and which documentary archives can I be excited uh, open up a spectrum of mental possibilities around the world um, that we have been developing for years. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Diana, for your presentation, for for share your images and your your opinions about uh, this uh, short questionnaire that we that we build with with Ali. So, Ali, uh, as a conclusion, uh, please, uh, it's your turn. <laughs> share with us. Share with us your. Yes, of course. Oh, yes, well, yes. it's wonderful to see the work of these uh, four for female photographers. I'm very glad to say some words about their words. <clears throat> Situated or humanistic photography began when photographers felt the need to document different aspects of society. In this sense, I agree with Bertolt Brecht when he established that the theme of aesthetic production is at the disorder of the world. In 1926, John Grierson defined documentary as an exposition of facts, as rhetoric of immediacy and truth. Also, this is present in all the projects of these four photographers because they are signs of existence. But what is also found is what is not longer just a matter of showing the real, but also stating what underlies each phenomenon. It supposes a capacity to link the representation of things with subjectivity, with what they essentially awaken. This is related to the current translation of the uh, photographic genres. The present displacements make up an aesthetic at a time which gives an account of a dense work of the friction, of the thickness, and of the complexity that with different degrees of presence is in, insinuated in each of your images. It is clear in the production of Lina, the two Natalias, and Diana, that there is a vitality in the emergence of the political and the transformation of the social order. The condition of possibility of visibility is then related to the political subjectivation that redefines what is visible and decipherable. In this sense, Jacques Rancière considers that art is political by kind of times and spaces it institutes, by the way it cuts out this time and populates the spaces. Thus, the political has a close relationship 
with an authorial gesture that chooses to make visible and configures a new distribution of the sensible and the intelligible. Visual productions who make visible situations that involve the human being in different aspects develop an activism, illuminate where other spheres fail and open up political options of the gaze. Since the beginning of photography, women have deployed production actions that became true visual archives of resistance by allowing emancipated subjectivities. Rey Melo, Angarita, Gasca, and Pedraza Bravo endorsed the phrase, the, pol the personal is political, popularized by Carol Hanisch in 1969, in the sense of showing their deep commitment to the events. The power of self-determination that we can observe in these four female photographers appeared from an attitude of initial courage when they began to look at their desires, their vocations and their needs and decided, as they told us recently, they decided to put their lives on the side of the action. The process of making pictures in spaces and periods of time considered as not possible for women photographers shows that their aesthetic and social practices turn their, their images in signifying surfaces. In their images and their statements, also from the title of the exhibition, uh, we can appreciate their dispute with colonial patriarchy, not only from the individual and social imaginary, but also from an economic point of view. This colonial patriarchy that is dominant and hegemonic, which provokes tensions in the spaces where their work is developed. Therefore, these four female photographers expand the conditions of possibility of photography by uniting the documentary with the symbolic, revealing the diverse symptoms of the present through a commitment and creative gesture perhaps somehow insurgent, and that appeals to the sensibility of, and thoughtfulness of the receiver. To conclude and give way to the questions of the audience, we understand that the existence illuminates and is the raison d'etre of photography. But at the same time, photography enriches existence through successive glances in time. Well, well done, all. <laughs> we can uh, perhaps give space to the, uh, the questions of the audience now. If there are others, Rashi. Hi, Ale. So we don't have anything yet. So if, any, if anyone in the audience would like to ask a question, please feel free to add it into the chat. Um, and maybe to get things going, Ale, Camilo, did you have any starter questions? Okay. In the in the meantime, I have to say that I'm very uh, happy to have seen all your pictures. Not only the pictures I saw at the exhibition, which are very strong, of course. And it was wonderful to see all your works and all your thoughts about your day-by-day uh, -day work also. Thank you for seeing and for the space and for the invitation. We are very glad to be here. Well, thanks to you, Natalia, for reaching your, our, our invitation today. We know that you have uh, difficult days, <laughs> job days. <laughs> you are now, yeah, she was, uh, you were in Bichara, yeah, was that? And the last week you were at? It was the two, list, two, week, two weeks ago, I was in Mokoa, and last week, Mokoa, I, Guaviare, the, the mosquito bite. So, 
<laughs> Wait. Ah, Mocoa and yeah, Guaviare is in the jungle here in Colombia, the it's south the of Colombia. Yes. Yeah, and now you are in Washington, D.C. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and tomorrow I'm going to travel to Santa Fe, Nuevo Mexico. So <laughs> it's a very busy uh, week. So thank you for being here and thank you, Diana, to you. Uh, I know you thank have, you a, yeah, you have uh, a, a lot of job this week. You are as a part of the team of Forbes. You have a lot of things to do and a lot of assignments here in Colombia. So thank you for, for being with us. And I want to, to say thank you to, to Lina and, and Natalia because um, they, are, of course, uh, we work together in this exhibition. Um, uh, it was a common effort that we made to, to have this great exhibition that uh, had a great audience uh, about uh, 1,500, yeah, specters. So it was great for this museum. It's a university museum for the people that maybe don't know where, where we are right now, where I am right now. Um, yeah, it's a common effort and Natalia and Lina sent us the information, sent us their, their thoughts about the photography, about this uh, long stroke that you have uh, to find a place in the in the photography here in Colombia and in the world as as, as you are doing right now. <laughs> so so thank you so much for for joining uh, this this talk. And I don't know if we have uh, questions for photographers for, there, for there Ari, is a, whatever. There is a commenter. Yes, there is a commenter uh, at the chat from Deborah Patfield. She says, thanks, very interesting. I have to go now, but I've enjoyed seeing the, and hearing about your work, thank you. And there is now another commenter, as a female photography student who is starting off on her own journey as a photographer, it's encouraging and inspiring to see women working regardless of the discrimination and injustices put on women by society. Thank you for pushing through and working during those situations. What advice or suggestions do you have for women photographers starting off and aim to follow a career in photography? She asks. Wow. Um, send the photos. <laughs> send the photos for uh, all chief editors and all chief photography, you, you can, maybe they will say no, but maybe they know you and they have you in her list of people. So I, 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 I'm saying that, but it's very difficult thing to me. So I, it's, it's, I, I'm saying <laughs> something that I, I don't do like I, I will do it. Uh, but I guess it's a, it's a good uh, advice. Try to show your work and don't be afraid of that. Uh, as women, we are afraid as than the men to do it. And a lot of men are taking the jobs uh, just for half the value to send the photos. So send the photos, that's the, that's the thing, that's how. Andy, I, I think, uh, believe in, in you and your stories and stories is very close uh, and it's important believe in in you okay yeah. that's I, a good advice I, I think i think it's it's, uh, it's something important that uh, all of you say because um is the idea of the own voices uh, the, the, the own voice of each one and you show that own voice, uh, the four of you show that, that own voice. Uh, since you started the, the studies in photography here in the university, uh, as I remember, you started so young to, uh, with this curiosity to participate in the mass media, to send photographs, to try to contact, to participate in, the, in, in all the calls that you, that you say, or most of the calls that, do, that you 
can participate. So I think it's, that, that, that is important. There is a, a good advice just to leave the producer aside and, and, go, and go for it and get your own voices to, to do it. What do you want? Okay, perfect. Yes. Great. Well, I feel like that's probably the perfect way for us to wrap up today's event. So just a huge thank you to everyone, to Diana and Natalia for being here, Camilo, Alejandra for hosting the event. And thank you to everyone for attending. Um, so yeah, we'll have a chat later on and hopefully this recording might be available through your network organization. So keep your eyes peeled. And then we have our next event is gonna be on the 16th of November and the speaker is to be confirmed. So just keep an eye on our website and social media and we will keep you posted. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Rashi. Thank you all. And thank you to everyone. <laughs> thank you everyone.